Hey my friends, I have to start this video off with a small disclaimer that I, I may be a little snarky today and it's not an intentional snark. Uh, it's just the subject matter I have to cover. So I, if I offend anyone, I really never mean to offend anyone. It seems lately that I offend a lot of people, kind of no matter what I say, but I, it's never my intention, honestly. My name is Tom and you're watching the Watchin' River channel. I am so glad you're here. It's another good day the Lord has given us, and we will rejoice and be glad in it while we wait. What are we waiting for? We're waiting for the harpazo, the snatching up out of danger, the rapture of the church, which I believe could happen anytime I am looking up every day. I really don't have time for snack suggestions, chicken burrito and a big red. I don't have the time, so let's just move on to scripture, okay? <laughs> let's do it. Let's go to Psalm 16, verse 11. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. I love that verse. Psalm 139, 7 and 8. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend into heaven, you are there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, you are there. Let's go to Acts 3, verse 19. Repent, therefore, and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. What is like that refreshing that only comes from the presence of the Lord? Only those who have experienced it can even talk about it. It's that Holy Spirit dwelling in us is amazing. Psalm 105 verse 4, seek the Lord and his strength, seek his face evermore. Amen. Let's go to Revelation 3 verse 5. He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Oh, one more. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Beautiful scriptures, right? So beautiful. All right. Let's see what went on last night in Amsterdam. It was horrible. It was horrifying. Uh, Jews were attacked. And I'm going to just shotgun a lot of information. Some of it I have to correct as I go along, and I'll do that. I'm going to start off with the beginning of Sorrow's News from Telegram. A terrible night in Amsterdam. Reports of hundreds of Arabs trying to lynch Maccabee Tel Aviv fans. Reports of Arabs waiting with knives in the alleys, stampedes, firecrackers thrown into hotels. The police are just now starting to show up at some of the events. Prime Minister Netanyahu and the new Foreign Minister Saar have now spoken they're updated and involved in what is happening in Amsterdam and are in contact with the professionals involved in dealing with these difficult events. This was from the Prime Minister's office last night. Netanyahu is aware of the details of the severe violence in Amsterdam against Israeli citizens, conducted a situation assessment with the Foreign Minister and his military secretary, and he is receiving regular updates all the time. The Prime Minister ordered the immediate release of two rescue planes to aid our citizens and views the horrific event very seriously and demands the Dutch government and the Dutch security forces to act firmly and quickly against the rioters and ensure the peace of our citizens. He didn't end up sending those two planes. They ended up using commercial airlines to get people out of there. You'll find out why, and I'll tell you in a few minutes. But also, Advidor, a Maccabee fan, told the special broadcaster of News 12 in Israel, We are in the hotel. We don't feel comfortable with the local police. They ignore us and justify the situation. They tell us that everything will be fine. But there is a motorcycle patrol around the hotel. Right after the game, when we got off from the train, a big mess started. People ran. They hit and stabbed Israelis. People returned to the hotel after being trampled and beaten. Maccabee Tel Aviv fans on News 12 said, we're not safe here. We are surrounded while we're in the hotel. What we know so far is that fans were ambushed. Six reported missing. 
Attackers were armed with clubs and knives. Israelis were thrown into rivers. They were run over by cars. Their passports were stolen and published online. Fathers walking with their children were attacked by mobs. Women were beaten in the streets, many beaten unconscious. Two emergency planes have been dispatched. They weren't from Ben Gurion Airport to evacuate citizens immediately. The local authorities were overwhelmed. Medical services were unavailable as local authorities have lost control of the city where thousands of Muslim migrants scattered over Amsterdam are perpetrating these attacks, breaking into hotels, firing incendiary devices through windows and burning Israeli flags. This is from Bubba News Telegram. 57 people have been arrested in Amsterdam so far. Tonight is flashing back memories of 1938 Europe with Jew hatred spreading. This is exactly what globalized the Intifada looks like. It's being reported in Israel media that the Mossad and Shin Bet, in a very unusual move, sent agents into the streets of Amsterdam at the direction of the foreign ministry. That didn't happen. That was reported early on. Did not happen. You'll find out why also with that in a minute. They were instructed to shoot anyone who harmed Israelis. Didn't happen. There are reports that this was a well-organized ambush tonight, a pogrom. Pogrom is a big word to Jews. They know what it means. What's a pogrom? And I hope I'm saying that right. An organized, often officially encouraged massacre or persecution of a minority group, especially one conducted against Jews. A riot aimed at persecution or massacre of a particular ethnic or religious group, usually Jews. Organized persecution of an ethnic group, especially Jews. Thank you for saying it, Baba. Takes courage to say that. This is from Israel Today on Telegram. According to an IDF spokesman, following the severe and violent incidents against Israelis in Amsterdam, the IDF is preparing to immediately deploy a rescue mission with the coordination of the Dutch government. The mission will be deployed using cargo aircraft and include medical and rescue teams. Didn't happen. Just trying to clear up what did happen and what didn't happen. Also, Jews in Amsterdam are being cautioned to avoid wearing Jewish symbols. Channel 12 News in Israel said the assault on Israelis in Amsterdam appears to be premeditated. Yes. And they said that six Jews were missing. They thought they had been held hostage. Last I heard it was three were still missing. We'll see where that goes. What's happening in Amsterdam is not, this is from Israel today. What's happening in Amsterdam is not a clash between fans of two opposing football teams. That's what's being pushed in the mainstream media. It has nothing to do with sport. In fact, the fans of the local team Ajax are affectionately known as the Jews due to the city's rich Jewish history. What's happening is a Muslim pogrom against Jews on the streets of Europe. The game was just an opportunity to attack a lot of Israelis and Jews together in one place. And here we go. The IDF has canceled the rescue mission to the Amster to Amsterdam. The f uh, commercial flights are still operating on a special schedule to bring all Israeli home. So the commercial airlines were doing it. We're getting them out of there. Isra uh, Israel's military delegation to Amsterdam was already on the plane and ready to take off when the mission was abruptly canceled. This change, and this will make sense, this change reportedly stemmed from fears that Israeli soldiers could face legal action at the behest of anti-Israel organizations were they to land and operate on Dutch soil. You know that would have happened. So I agree. You know, get them home on commercial airline. You know what? We're living in a world now, much like before World War II, where Except in, before World War II, they didn't have a nation called Israel to even go to. And they hated them then. They don't have a place. But now they have a place to go to. And my goodness, if I were Jewish, I would be going back to Israel. Almost anywhere in the world. Because it's getting worse and worse. All right. Also from Israel today. The question now is what will the Netherlands do to rectify the underlying problem? 
And it's not only Holland. What's happening, what's been happening in London and on American university campuses is little better than what we saw last night in Amsterdam because the king of, Am of the Netherlands uh, shared this message, I believe on X. We failed the Jews in World War II and last night we failed them again. Amir Sarfati said last night, it's 1938 in Europe. He said, tonight, Europe has fallen. Incredible times we live in, aren't they? Incredible times. It just blows my mind when I see this BBC headline about what happened in Amsterdam last night. Some Maccabee fans looking for a fight, witness tells BBC. I've spoken to a fan who went to the match last night who reports seeing Maccabee Tel Aviv supporters on the Amsterdam Metro going up and down the carriages three or four times looking for a fight. You know, this is why you got to be careful with mainstream media. Because the thing is, this is the thing that people who stick to X and Telegram and for news. First of all, you get news a day before everybody else gets it or hours before. And then you literally get the perpetrators of the crimes like to film themselves doing the crimes. So I see literally 50 videos this morning of the perpetrators kicking people, stabbing people, hitting people with cars. Yeah, I got to see that too. And they film it and they're laughing and just having the time of their life because they're wicked, evil, demonic filled creatures and then the mainstream media says oh it's just a little sports fight oh the Jews were looking for a fight it sickens me it really sickens me all right that's that's what we got there now I'm gonna go to if I can find it stuff that's going on according to Khan news Iran has begun transferring hundreds of missiles and drones to its proxy forces in Iraq, building a strategic stockpile for potential retaliation and long-term conflict against Israel. Some people think because Trump is president now, oh, well, that's it. You know, I've literally had people say, do you think now the rapture is going to be four years off? I'm like, you really think he has the power to hold off the rapture for four years? And now I'm going to, you know, I'm getting comments like you guys would not believe. <laughs> How do I say this? Because there's no good way to say it. One side is telling me that all I do in my videos is kiss Trump's butt. Over and over and over. The other side, because we live in a partisan world where nobody can ever, ever, ever keep their eyes on Jesus, it seems. The other side is saying, oh, Tom, you hate Trump so much. It's so obvious how much you hate him. And the other side says, you're kissing his butt left and right. I, I, I've never, I've, I've lost so many subscribers in the last couple of days. I don't, I don't really, I'm not concerned about that. I don't care, honestly. If you unsubscribe, because you can't come to realize that I'm a Jesus man. And these politics are a trap. All right, I'm still getting snarky. I'm getting snarky, guys. All right. So yeah, so Iran is still getting ready. And I think something big is going to happen way before the inauguration. I'm hoping it's the rapture. But I think we're going to see terrible things before the inauguration. And I think last night was the beginning of it in Europe. We're living in the last days. American F-15 fighter planes have arrived in the Middle East as of yesterday. The U.S. military said after Washington announced the deployment of additional assets to the region in a warning to Iran. Trump's victory raises fears of Israel-Iran clash before he can stop the wars. Analysts warn both sides are likely to take even more risks in the dying days of the Biden administration. With the Middle East teetering on the brink the re-election of Donald Trump to the U.S. presidency has raised fears of a renewed clash between Israel and Iran in the 10-week period leading up to his inauguration, despite him promising in his victory speech to stop wars. Analysts warn 
that Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu, emboldened by the electoral success of his staunch ally Trump, may be tempted to act decisively against Tehran during the dying days of the Biden administration. Or vice versa, Iran may try something in these days with their proxies because they may feel like, well, once Trump's inaugurated, we're toast. I just, there's so many people who are just are thinking like, all right, that's it now. Trump's going to stop the wars. It's going to be peace now. Everything's fine. We're going, let's just have our life back. Everything's fine. We're not in the last days anymore. Now we got four more years. This is from Baba News. He shared the Times of Israel headline, Trump official suggests 2020 Israeli-Palestinian peace plan will be back in play. Guess what Donald Trump's two-state solution entails? The global alliance that MBS of Saudi Arabia, that's Mohammed bin Salman, has been working on. The Israeli-Palestinian peace plan, the next meeting for the global alliance is 1128 in Brussels. The Israeli-Palestinian peace plan advanced by President-elect Trump during his first term is front and center when he returns to the Oval Office. That includes dividing uh, Jerusalem, just so we get that clear. That means dividing. Trump's 2020 peace plan is still relevant today. Trump's proposal contains all of the conditions Saudi Arabia is seeking in order to normalize with Israel. Having a state of Palestine along with a peace plan for Israel is what Trump and Saudi Arabia and the European Union and others are putting together on a global stage. We will continue to hear more and more about peace and security via a two-state solution plan that all parties can agree to. There you go. Thank you for sharing that, Bubba. What else? The Houthis launched missiles at Israel's nuclear sites this morning. Yay! Earlier this morning, the Houthi terrorist group in Yemen launched a ballistic missile towards Israel's nuclear facilities in Damona. The IDF intercepted the missile. Right before I hit record, Amir Sarfati said, We are at a bomb shelter. Rocket alerts all over the country. Probably ballistic missiles. Crazy booms. From the north down to Tel Aviv, there was a lot going on right before I hit record. He also talked about the war in Ukraine last night, eight consecutive hours of a drone attack on Kiev. Last night, Russia carried out one of the most extensive drone attacks to date on the capital of Ukraine, Kiev. The attack and the alarms in the capital of Ukraine lasted for about eight hours without a break. It appears that the goal was to knock out Ukraine's defense systems. Pray for the people over there. Pray for the people over there. Man. You guys ready to go home? I am so ready. Next, we've got over 40 monkeys on the loose in South Carolina after escaping a research lab. That can't be good. Authorities in South Carolina have issued a public alert for residents to lock their doors and windows following the escape of over 40 monkeys from a research facility on Wednesday night, night before last. So we got when monkeys escape from a research lab. That could be the making of something that won't be fun. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Earthquakes, last 24 hours, 35 over 4.0, 9 over 5.0, 1 over 6.0. I believe that was in Chile. Big one. I believe it was in Chile. This is from Bubba News. Global payment networks are reading palms as the future in retail. He said the buy and sell payment systems are being set up and expanding globally now. Palm biometric scans are joining with smartphones, smartwatches, and pay by face systems as an increasingly popular option for making in person payments. Key players like Visa, Amazon, JP Morgan, and MasterCard are backing palm based payment systems, signaling a future where physical wallets will become obsolete. The enrollment is easy. And it involves a one-time setup at the point of sale. Customers will be asked to tap their Visa card, scan their palm, and complete an authentica uh, authentication process. Afterwards, a payments token linked to the user's palm biometric data will enable them to make payments by waving their hand over the sensor, eliminating the need for having physical cards or using mobile devices. We're there. We are there. JP Morgan is rolling out the Palm based payment system in 2025, and MasterCard has integrated 
Palm Biometrics into its biometric checkout program. Global commerce is being set up one biometric at a time. There you go. And then remember how we talked about the uh, artwork that the AI artists did and how that was going to go to auction and they expected it to get like 120 to 190,000 I believe if my memory is correct well get ready the painting by the AI robot had sold for 1.3 million dollars <laughs> sorry I'm laughing I just you know I'm... <laughs> the artist's name is Aida she's the Aida robot, and it's the first humanoid robot artist to have an artwork sold at an auction. That's where's my clown world sound effect? Because man, does it get clownier than that? Some dude or dudette whipped out one point three million dollars to buy a computer generated image. <laughs> he just might be the ringmaster of clown world, honestly. But anyway, that's what's going on there. You want to do a few comments of the day? Let's do it. Take us home, Yeshua said. Feels like a false sense of peace is upon us. Keeping my focus on Jesus, I saw a literal lost sheep yesterday grazing on the outside of a fence. Reminded me of how Jesus leaves the 99 to go find the one lost sheep. Amen. Amen. Madison, my desire to be in God's presence increases daily. May we go home soon. Madison, I bet you there's a lot of amens being said right now. Anita, I don't understand any Christian who tells us to stop watching when God tells us to do just that. The Lord tells us to watch and wait and to be in constant expectation of his soon return. And I'm doing all of the above. Thank you, Anita. I am too. And many watching are. Breezy Mama, what a time to be alive in Christ Jesus. We are so blessed to see his ancient prophecy being fulfilled before our eyes. Yes, we are indeed blessed to be alive in these days. Jesus loves you, said, I went outside last night, and as I was standing there, I noticed how quiet it was. I mean, no wind, no bugs, no animals, just dead silence. And I got the feeling that something big was coming soon, so I went inside and started writing a letter for anyone left behind. I felt like Jesus was putting it on my heart that I needed to get it done soon because we don't have much time left. He's coming soon, and I can't wait to see him and go home. Amen. I'm with you. I agree. It's sooner than most think. Do you know Jesus? Most of you do. But if you maybe, maybe you grew up in a Christian household and never really belonged to Jesus, you kind of played the part, but you never really truly believed it's kind of like, ah, oh, yeah, my family does it. This is what we've always done. It's tradition. Going to church on Sunday and, you know, saying the Our Father before we go to bed at night. It's our tradition. But you don't really know the Lord. Well, I'm going to tell you that time is short. And I'm going to give you the gospel. And I'm going to do it very quickly. And I want you to pay attention because it's it's so important to realize that our sins were paid for. By the blood of the Lamb, Jesus. And time is so short. And all you have to do is say, Jesus, I'm a sinner because we're all sinners. I need payment for these sins. I need this sin problem gone. And I have faith that that's exactly what the blood you shed does. It will take my sins and it'll wash me white as snow. Give me a clean slate, a fresh start. It will remove my sin away from me as far as the east is from the west. And Jesus, I believe in your finished work that you went to the cross and you died and you were buried and you rose again the third day. Jesus, you are the savior of the world and I need a savior. When you do that, you're saved. You're sealed until the day of redemption. You're born again. God will put his Holy Spirit in you. You will have a secure future in Christ Jesus. You will be a new creation because Jesus makes all things new. Time is short. There's not much time. You don't want to face Jesus on Judgment Day. You don't want to be left behind for the seven-year tribulation. Turn to Jesus today because today is the day of salvation. 
I'm going to shut the camera off now and I'm going to say a prayer for every person who watched this video. And if we're not raptured today, and man, today is a perfectly good day for the rapture. But if not, God willing, I will see you guys tomorrow. I love you guys.